Welcome back to At Home with Music, from medieval to modern. As we continue to talk about the music of the Baroque era, the Baroque period, and we're going to be talking today about the music that was written for the keyboard. And I could actually give this a subtitle. Let's show off a little. You see, keyboard instruments, which of course at that time were the clavichord and the harpsichord, these were instruments that were used to show how good you could play, how fast you could play, how flashy you could be. And so one of the pieces that Baroque composers wrote to show off was the toccata, which literally means touch, touched, as in the keys. Fingers are flying around, and it was basically a, a one-movement showcase of intricate melodic patterns and fast fingering. And the name most closely associated with the Toccata is that of Guillermo Frescobaldi. And boy, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. But anyway, we'll leave a link in the description to one of his Toccatas so you can hear what they sound like. Now, the fugue, maybe you've heard of a fugue. A fugue combined the virtuosity of the Toccata with a consistent structured approach. The, the fugue, there were just specific rules that you had to follow to write a fugue. And a lot of times it just, you know, a fugue was basically you had a melody that was stated and then it was weaved together with a bunch of other voices that also stated that melody. And occasionally the melody would come back in different forms. Sometimes they'd turn it upside down. Sometimes they'd play it backwards. And all the while, they've got three voices going at the same time. They're not easy things to write. I attempted to write some fugues when I was studying music. And I can tell you, it's, it's a real mental exercise. Now, the best way that I can illustrate what fugues are like is to, once again, put some links in the description to the most famous fugue writer of all, which was Johann Sebastian Bach. We've already mentioned him in a previous video. And so he would put together these amazing fugues that, uh, well, I'll give you an example of the most, one of his most famous fugues. It's called the Little Fugue in G minor. It was actually written for the pipe organ. And so not only was the tune, which if you have any knowledge of Baroque music, you'll recognize this particular fugue right away. Starts with the melody that's being um, stated. Da, 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 you'll you'll recognize it. Many of you will recognize it. But then you even have to play it with your feet, which uh, I don't know about you, but I a lot of people think that if you play the piano, you should also be able to play the organ. Well, you can kind of fake it, but I could never do the foot stuff because I never properly studied organ. I was mainly a pianist, and I also studied harpsichord. So I never got the foot part down, but you actually, you can hear the organist playing the melody with his feet. <laughs> no small feet. Oop, no pun intended. Anyway, this is what I want you to get familiar with now as, as we go into this last video on the Baroque music. Keyboard music, also very popular along with instrumental music, cantatas, oratorios, and Harpsichord music, eventually the piano would be coming in near the end of the Baroque period and into the Classical period. And then a toccata, which is a touch piece, very fast, very flashy sometimes. And the fugue, which is like a toccata, but very highly structured and not at all easy to write. But fascinating to listen to, because what you can do when you're listening to a fugue is wait for that tune that's stated very plainly at the beginning. Wait for it to come back in its various forms. Fascinating and great and very much worthy of your attention and study. So, next we're going to be moving into the music of the classical period. And from time to time we will stop and look more closely at the lives and works of the great composers in each of these periods. So, somewhere along the way we'll go back and we'll talk a little bit more about Bach, a little bit more about Handel, and some of the other great composers of the Baroque era. Thanks for watching. 
please like and subscribe. This helps the channel. And share this video with anybody else that you think might be interested in these things, and I hope you all are. Any homeschool families that are looking to teach music in their homeschool. I look forward to telling you more about all the great music that is out there that you can discover as we move forward in our study from medieval to modern.